Hi everybody, Tex-Mex here. Thanks for joining me for another video. It's quite windy out here, so most likely I'm going to end up having to... Uh, <laughs> I'm going to end up having to do a voiceover on this because I'm sure this wind is terrible and is messing with the microphones. But either way, we're out here to shoot my Henry Big Boy. I put a scope on it. I know many people think this is a sacrilegious thing to do, that scoping a lever action just isn't done. But this is one that I need to be a little more accurate out at a distance. And the truth is, 357 Magnum, because this one is chambered in 357 or 38 Special, out of a uh, rifle length, although this is the carbine, it's the 16 inch, but still, with that much extra barrel length on the 357 Magnum, you get a lot of energy and power out of it. And it can actually be a relatively good hunting round for short distances. So I put this scope on it. I really only needed like a, a two to three power scope, but this one was relatively inexpensive. It's a Leupold VX Freedom. It's a two to seven power. So I'm gonna sight it in using the seven power. Uh, but when I actually have it out in the field, I'll most likely only have it on two or three as far as magnification goes, because I'm gonna wanna be able to take quick shots and potentially running shots with this rifle. Although I do have it hitting paper, I haven't sighted it in for any specific ammunition yet. And what I decided to do is I brought out four different types here, two types of 357 Magnum and two types of 38 Special. So in 38 Special, we have 130 grain and 158 grain. And then in the 357 Magnum, we have 158 grain and 110 grain. I know 125 is more popular, but uh, this was the light one I was able to get. And I figure if it prefers a lighter round, we'll be able to tell with a 110 grain, although I expect it may like the 158 grain, or at least I'm hoping it does since the heavier the bullet, the more effective it is for hunting, you know, hogs and things of that sort. So I've got it set here at 50 yards. I got four targets down there. I'm gonna fire five rounds of each onto each target just to see which one groups better. And that way I can start narrowing down which particular ammunition I will eventually sight this rifle in for. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my other camera down there at the target set up, and then we'll get started with our shoot. Okay, well the wind is still going, but man, it feels really nice out here. And even with the wind, it is pausing in between gusts, so I will try to squeeze my shots off during the pauses. And secondly, it's only 50 yards. I'm shooting 357. The lightest grain here is 110. The heaviest is 158. I can't expect, even with, you know, these gusts that are probably not much more than 10 miles per hour, uh, maybe, maybe 12, is going to have any sort of significant effect on the point of impact. Uh, maybe a half inch. I would even guess probably not that. But, uh, okay, so we're going to start off with the 130 grain, 38 special on the top left target. I loaded six rounds. I'm going to load six rounds of each ammunition. Let's see which one groups the best. Ooh, that was further to the left than I expected. Okay. Now, this wasn't a complete cold bore. I fired a few rounds earlier just to get it on paper. Uh, so, I'm not sure about that first shot, but it seemed to be much further right than the other two uh, hits. Oh, it feels nice. It's a cool breeze. Okay. And one more. Oh, 
Okay. Well, I certainly did seem to get a pattern there. So now I'm going to let the barrel cool just a few minutes and uh, we'll move on to our next ammunition. Next up is going to be the other 38 Special. This is the 150 grain, excuse me, 158 grain lead round nose. It just occurred to me, I guess I could have tried some plus P's as well, but the truth is I'm going to most likely be shooting 357 Magnum out of this. I just kind of wanted to see how it grouped 38 Special. So now I'm going to shoot at the bottom left target. Ooh, close to the bullseye. Oh, a little to the left. It's amazing the difference you get in the impact just with the type of bullet and weight. I think that one hit right, right next to the first shot. Ooh, low into the right. Whoa, high into the right. Hmm, doesn't seem to like these lead round nose very much. Let's get the sixth round out of here. Huh. So three of the rounds it grouped really well and three it did not. So I'm not sure. I'm not sure what to think of this lead round nose. So once again, gonna give the rifle a couple of minutes and uh, go adjust my camera over at the targets. And now we're going to try the 357 Magnum 110 grain. This is a jacketed hollow point. Once again, I'll wait for little pauses between the wind. The wind went away while I was messing with my target, but of course, now that I'm trying to shoot, it's back. So it seems to be toying with me. So we're going to shoot at the top right target. Okay, so apparently the first shot was so high into the right, it was off of paper. So I'm gonna adjust my scope a little bit. I'm gonna drop it, let's see here. Uh, one, two, about four inches down and about two inches to the left. So I just shot the other five targets at the paper target I have to the left just to try to get it more on my point of aim. So that's a quick lesson here. Even though the 38 Special 130 grain and 150 grain were, were hitting close to the bullseye, the moment I put in 357 Magnum 110 grain, it was so high into the right that it was off of the complete large target. So now that I have adjusted my scope a little bit, I'm going to load six rounds in again to give it a second to cool off. And we will try again with the top right target see how it groups this ammunition and this is take two on the 110 grain 357 magnum six rounds still very high Let's hope the others stay on target. Wow, not very consistent. That one hit very low. I mean, it hit almost on the bullseye, but compared to the other impacts, that's that's big difference.
Okay, wind's picking up. Okay, that's six rounds. And we're gonna finish off with the 357 Magnum 158 grain jacketed soft point. Now I didn't like the 38 Special 158 grain, but that was a lead round nose. So I'm wondering if that had something to do with it. So let's see how it likes the uh, jacketed soft point. Maybe it just prefers copper jackets. Ooh, you can feel that difference between the 158 copper jacketed and the uh, 38 special lead round nose it certainly has more of a kick even in this rifle certainly very manageable it's a lot of fun to shoot but due to the weight of the henry i mean shooting a 38 special out of this is almost like shooting 22. so it's just that it actually has a little bit of a kick with the uh, 357. Oh, very nice. Now that one was a little low. Okay pretty well but it does seem that the 357 158 grains are warming up the barrel a lot faster 38 specials barely warmed the barrel up at all okay. been having to pause a bit between the wind Nice. I think we have a winner. Here comes that wind again. Very nice. Okay. Let me go get our targets and we can compare them here at the table. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, here we are with our targets. So we started out with the 38 Special 130 grain. Not a bad little group, actually. Uh, was hitting them a little bit to the right, but obviously if I sided in my rifle for this particular ammunition and drifted it over a little bit, uh, I think this would do fine. And this was a, a full metal jacket. Now, when we move down to the 158 grain lead round nose, didn't seem to like that one as much. I mean, we got three hits really close to each other and then three far away. So is it possible these had a little bullet deformation? It, it may be, or it may be it just does not like lead round nose ammunition because it did prefer the other 158 grain, the uh, 357. But we'll get to that in a second because before that we shot the 110 grain 357 Magnum. This is a jacketed hollow point and uh, it hit it really far up and to the right and not a great group uh, i don't think it likes this lighter ammunition and i had to change my point of uh, aim quite a bit so that's one thing to know about these 357 lever actions that uh, if you're sighting them in for a 38 special versus 357 the point of aim was literally about a foot a foot and a half difference so if you have it sighted in for one and load the other it's not necessarily going to hit anywhere close to where your other point of impact was hitting not only that but even within the same you know you have 130 grain here almost hitting bullseye a little to the right while the 158 grain was hitting right on bullseye but just spreading out a lot more it's a much bigger spread but uh, I did not change the scope. I did not mess with the scope between these two. So you can see different weights of even the same type of ammunition is gonna have a different point of impact uh, compared to your point of aim. And then on the 357 Magnum, I'm curious of how, how it would like 125 grain since that's very popular, but I figured I'd start with a very light one. And oh, by the way, this is just, uh, I think it's a spear point that I found when I was walking towards my target. But um, it didn't like the lighter very much. I uh, hit it very, very high. Uh, as compared to the 158 grain 
uh, jacketed soft point, this one was almost right on target, slightly high and to the right, with a really good group. So luckily for me, this is what I was hoping it would prefer. Obviously there are heavier grains of 357 Magnum. I'm curious if maybe it would like those as well. But if I'm gonna take this uh, particular rifle hunting or trying to take down a hog or something of that sort, the heavier the ammunition, the better. So as far as today's shoot, I'm gonna give the win to the 158 grain 357 Magnum jacketed soft point American Eagle. And I am going to side in this particular scope for this ammunition. But anyway, guys, I don't know if I'm going to be having to do a voiceover because it is still quite windy, but it is a gorgeous day nonetheless. Probably not the best day for shooting, but certainly a great day for hiking and just being outdoors. But as always, thank you all for watching. Henry Big Boy, great rifle. You find the ammunition it likes, you can sight it in, and you're going to have yourself a nice, accurate little carbine that can shoot some 357 with a lot more power than you would get out of a revolver. But I hope you all are doing well. Ammunition's back on the shelves, so I hope you're getting outside. And if you aren't getting to shoot, that you're at least enjoying the outdoors before the serious summer heat hits. <laughs> but as always, thanks for watching. And I will see you all in the next video.